Uh, today I wanted to show you a new idea I got while I was playing with the hubs. So the hubs I'm referring to are these three hubs which have been used in Tinhix sets, let's say recently. So first one uh, that inspired me is the one that was used in 8466 for the first time in Extreme Offroader 2. And this hub is really interesting because it has the it allows the suspension arms to be very close together which means that you don't lose much ground clearance when using it uh, but the negative side is that it only uses ball joints so it's not very useful if you want to attach a longer steering arm or something like that the next hub that is part me is the one that has been used uh, since 2016 i think from the porsche onwards and this one uses basically pin holes and cross holes uh, it still uses the same CV joint, but it has advantage of multiple options for connecting and you can use ball pins on it or normal pins, but the negative side is that it's larger, so the suspension arms are further apart, which means that you lose more ground clearance. The final hub that inspired me is the one that was first used in 42099, so this is uh, usual now, now usual, it was very new when it came out, is the geared hub. And similar to the one before, uh, the suspension arms are 5 studs apart, the ball joints in this case are integrated, and it has a lot of uh, attachment options here, so you can use a cross hole or a normal hole, and it uses a really nice and strong CV joint here. Uh, in my opinion it is over designed for this hub, but it was of course useful later with the Audi hub, which is on the end. So the idea is, why not combine the, all the advantages of these three hubs and make my own and this is what I came up with basically so first of all the attachment points are the same as this one for the suspension so the suspension arms are only three stars apart next I'm using the normal CV joint here while it is a bit weak and it has a limited steering angle it is very simple to use and there is nothing to go wrong here it's reliable as long as you keep the torque low. Now, in order to keep the torque low, this hub uses internal gearing and I can simply pop it up and you can see what kind of a parts it uses inside. Let's remove these parts. So, basically, I wanted to use as many of uh, original LEGO parts as possible. So I'm using 8 tooth gears as the, as the planetary gears and inside there is a 26 tooth internal gear and to drive it all I'm using a 10 tooth gear uh, and this one is designed so that the CV joint can go all the way uh, through it because uh, the CV joints use this half a stud unusable X or that let's say so this one, this gear was designed so it allows this to go fully inside and basically uh, I decided to use half pins to hold the wheels of course I could uh, make the pins, uh, also print the pins print the pins uh, on this part but then the part would be much more complicated and harder to print so I decided to go with this compromise so you might be asking why I'm using a 10 tooth gear and 8 tooth gears, why not just go with 3 8 tooth gears and have a also 8 tooth gear inside to drive it? Well, that is not possible because it is not a valid combination. You can use 4 8 tooth gears outside or 2 8 tooth gears outside, but you cannot use 3 because then that would be uneven. That's how planetary gears basically work. And now we can simply assemble the hub. The only thing you have to be careful is to put the gears in proper spacing. So I assembled the hub and put it inside the suspension arm system. So basically the arms are two studs apart, they are very compact and you can see it has the full range of movement. You can go up, down and steer. So the only limitation is the CV joint, basically the angle of the CV joint is limited around 30 degrees. 
And now let's put the wheel on. I'm using the newer version with six holes, and this is very important because the newer ones have an area here which is uh, without an axle hole, and that area has to go on the hub first, and it pops on. You see, we can spin the motor, and if we drive it, you can see it's very smooth. You can have the whole suspension movement, you can also steer it. So it works really well and it can survive quite a, quite a bit of torque. The only limiting part, uh, factor is the CV joint here. This one is prone to skipping, but it only skips at very high torque. So we basically have to stall this motor almost to skip it. And this is a very useful idea, I think, for smaller models. You can get a very compact uh, gearing down of 3.6. And uh, I think uh, it is a nice idea and if you are uh, interested, if there's going to be enough demand, I can post STL files so you can try it yourself. Uh, I know this has been a bit of a different video than usual, but I still hope you like it. And if you did, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I wish you a nice day.